Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Noel McDade, just Senior Manager for uh, Northern Ireland. Uh, this morning, we have Kira Duffy from uh, South West College in Northern Ireland, um, who's going to give us uh, an insight into what they did with um, virtualized le learning um, and her experiences and the college's experiences over the years, how that has progressed over the years and um, how that has set them up to, um, to kind of leapfrog into where we are today in the current COVID crisis. And of course, where she thinks things might be going in the future. Kira, over to you. Okay, hello everybody. Um, as Noah says, my name's Kira Duffy. I'm um, from working Southwest College and I'm the Centre for Excellence Manager in Digital Learning. Um, I'm just going to try and share a short PowerPoint here. And I think the format is that we can ask, or you can ask questions at the end. Um, so again, I will probably talk too fast. Um, so just maybe a hands up if I'm talking okay at this stage in your camera. Okay. So I'll, if I start going very fast and you can't understand me, just put your hand up and I'll keep a wee eye. So just checking, can everybody see that okay? Yeah, okay. So as I say, Centre for Excellence Manager Digital Learning, um, the, my post just changed um, last year to this title, but uh, in essence, the same job that I've probably been doing now for about 10 years. Um, I used to manage technical services, MIS, um, student services, a whole range of, of college services. But 10 years ago, the director came to me um, and asked me would I move into the area, whole area of virtual learning and develop it. Um, so we started out with a few pilots. So I'm just going to take you shortly through our journey um, and where, where we've come from, where we are now, and I suppose what are the big tickets for moving forward. Um, we, in 2010, we had severe bad weather. Um, I had just had a baby and uh, couldn't leave the house for about five weeks. Um, the governing body met and they said, and just moving forward, that the college couldn't afford to be shut down um, and patchy um, delivery of teaching and learning. So they asked me to take on the job of looking at how we could develop um, all the co college services so that in the event of bad weather, um, we, did, we knew nothing about COVID-19 coming at that stage, um, that we could operate as a college 100% fully online. So I looked around at that stage um, to see if there's anybody else doing something similar. Couldn't come across any um, anywhere that had sort of shut their whole college down and went online. Um, we had to put quite a considerable amount of infrastructure in place and that was done, as you can see there, 2010, 2011. Um, remote desktop, looking at all our services, service areas like finance, HR. Um, how they could all operate as well as all the teaching and you know the teaching and learning. So in 2011 we shut the college for a week completely and we were fully online. So that's now nine years ago. Um, it was a really huge daunting experience for the staff at that stage. Most of the staff I would say hated me. Um, they didn't like me at all. There was tears and tantrums and all sorts of things. But I suppose from a, a governing body, I had the strategic backing of our governing body and our, our director and deputy director at that stage who were very keen to ensure continuity of service. Um, so it was really a, a, a business continuity project at the time. Um, so in virtual week, we had also to, to put the pressure on, we had ETA in, which would be the equivalent of your um, it's inspectorate, so it is. Um, so not only had we that going on, um, we um, also were running a project to Zambia. So we had we were connecting up with them. So there was lots of pressure points. All the servers went down the night before. Nobody knew anything like that there. But we were up operation and we delivered our, our we delivered our virtual week with six thousand students on for five days a week. And we we learnt an awful lot in that week as to the expectations of the students. What was the college like? What was our staff skill set like? So we progressed on over the years. Um, I then formed a, a new team of content developers, um, um, people that could um, develop the systems, but not only train the staff. And I took on the library services as well. Um, we wor well, worked quite a bit internationally over this last couple of years in China, Russia, America, Canada, 
looking, I suppose, international, international best practice around the whole area of online delivery. Um, have been very successful in terms of running a lot, a lot of projects around this area. We've, we're moving into artificial intelligence. Um, we've created a virtual college. Um, so doing lots and lots of different projects. So that took us up, I suppose, to 1819, um, whereby I launched a new digital education strategy. I went to the workshop with Jessica in terms of um, looking at the strategy of the college and I probably felt at that stage we were a bit complacent. Our staff had sort of got so used to having a virtual day every week or every year. Um, and I just really wanted to sort of re-energize the college and the staff in terms of what they were doing and, and how they were doing and um, what tools and techniques they were using in terms of digital pedagogy. Um, I'm also a lecturer as well, so I try to, I suppose, bring my practice into the classroom and share that expertise with the, with the rest of the college members. Um, so we ran, as I say, a virtual day every year. We've ran that for now nine years. It's successful. We, you know, staff go online, students go online, um, no, no real problems. So then, as I say, in um, 2018, we looked at you know, where is education going? How can we utilize these new technologies and bring them into the classroom? And we also build a new state. So it's looking very significantly at flexible learning spaces um, and extending that space of learning outside of the physical building. So we launched our strategy 1819, and that was really the vision was to transform the digital learning experience of staff and students so they could become engaged thinkers, active learners, knowledge constructors, and global citizens of the 21st century very big words. Um, so how to, how to make that happen is actually the important part. On last November, we had something like 10,299 students engaging with Canvas and live classes. We run a competition. Um, we do a huge amount of staff development sessions with our staff on an ongoing basis. And we also changed over to using Canvas as our main platform. So there's a lot of staff development had to be done there. So, um, one of the, I suppose, the big things that we, we did develop was using the JISC framework and the digital capability service from JISC. Um, we decided to develop our own level three qualification digital skills for educators. Um, we didn't even have to really do a lot of marketing with the staff in that. The first day that I, that I launched it, we had 78 staff signed up for it. Um, so we're, we've, we're two years into that qualification now and um, we have our second cohort coming on board now as well. Um, so that's very important for us in terms of developing and continually developing the digital skills and we're due to roll out the digital capability service now um, at the end of May, looking to see through this, I suppose, period of time of seven weeks, how has our digital skills of our staff developed. Um, so that's really it in terms of a presentation. So for, for um, fast track and then from November, our last virtual day to March, um, and obviously we were all as organizations looking at how the COVID-19 would impact upon us and how we could flip the college basically in three days. We, it was announced on um, the 16th of March that we would close the following Monday. We were off as a college the 16th and 17th. So when the staff came back the 18th, 19th and 20th of March, we had to ensure that everybody was up, ready to go um, live on the Monday morning. Um, I think we ran something like 450 staff development sessions within three days. Um, there was a mad, mad panic, I suppose, for everybody to be up live. Um, our director instigated that all classes every single class in the college bar, re bar recreational would be um, offering live class out. So every single, every single class in our timetable has a live class event. Um, the first week we had probably about, I think it was about 10,559 student engagements. Um, we have to report, all our staff have to fill out a register every single day uh, for every single class. We monitor all our engagements with our staff and students on a weekly basis. We produced a dashboard um, that monitors all our remote learning, uh, all our engagements with our students. 
And I suppose for our staff, because they were so used to, you know, they had the skills to, to flip into a fully online model, um, that was fine in terms of their technical skills. But what we did do a lot of work around was the social, which Kenji had talked about at the start here. Um, we ran like virtual coffee mornings, we have a virtual book club, um, we have competitions going on, we have quizzes going on on a, on a, a weekly basis for staff. Um, we encourage, I suppose, as much um, social engagement um, outside of, of the college as well. So getting staff, we've, I've wrote guidelines on remote working, I've wrote guidelines on teams. Um, we do a lot around health promotion with our HR team in terms of how to work online. Um, and we put a lot of energy, I suppose, into the wraparound services that we provide for students. All our learning support mentors are live. Um, all our technical support officers are live. Student services are live, careers are live. Every single service within the college is continuing to work um, as they normally would work in the building bar the social interaction um, of seeing people on a daily basis. We had something like 4,600 meetings on Teams in six weeks, which is quite incredible. I had to actually say to staff, you need to stop having so many online meetings. Um, a lot of social interaction is happening through Teams. Teams is our communication platform. Um, so we we set up a, a a remote support help desk that operates from half eight in the morning to half seven in the evening. Um, and we wrap a lot of services around staff and students to support them during this period. Um, we're also due to um, roll out the next phase of our digital skills qualification. Um, and that's going across all support staff management. Um, Cause our first target was, um, our first target was to um, look at the teaching and learning. Um, I suppose one of the big areas of development through this COVID-19 period is also the whole area of assessment because a lot of this, the staff would have been still doing face-to-face -face examinations, face-to-face -face, um, assessments. So the area I suppose that we've really had to focus on was giving the staff the skills um, to do online assessments um, and support them through that period of time. So that's probably been the major part of our work. In terms of live, uh, when I talk about live, to me, this is live. Um, so if a careers is live, they're in a live classroom, we call it a live support environment. Um, so very little of our engagement is done um, offline. The majority of our engagement is done online. I said at the start, we are a remote college. Um, we have about 60 miles apart. So we had to use the technology. Um, over the last number of years um, in terms of running our college. So it wasn't a big leap to move to this online model. Um, most of the staff feedback and student feedback that we're getting wouldn't be on um, the delivery and the quality of the delivery. It's all around just um, the social side of it, missing the social side of it, um, of coming into the college and meeting people. Um, and that, I suppose, is the biggest um, feedback that we would be getting at the minute. Um, a lot of the students as well are engaging better online because of nothing else to do. Um, we have quite a lot of students um, uh, around the whole area of social inclusion. Um, so they are, um, I suppose, find it, found it difficult to, re, to come back to the college to connect. Um, and we've used a lot of technology tools to engage with them students. And they're, they're actually really loving it because um, they have somebody talking to them every day, engaging with them every day. And I suppose it's stopped the isolation factor of working remotely and working from home. So a lot, a lot going on within the college. Um, where are we going in the future? I suppose a big area of development for me would be around the whole area of assessment. Um, we have run some projects around VR. We use VR virtual reality quite a bit um, in terms of our marketing. We're live next week with all our HE recruitment. Um, it's all been done through webinars. We're doing all our, our further education recruitment um, through live webinars. We're, you know, we're having to react to the environment we're in. So that's new for us. We've never done a recruitment fully online. So this is the first year of that. So there's a lot of firsts through this um, last seven weeks. Um, but I felt that we've really um, gelled as a team across the whole college 
um, because of the use of uh, and um, communicating using Teams um, meetings and um, making sure that that's always happening on a daily basis. We, I did instigate right at the start of this um, on week day one that every single line manager had to engage with their team um, first thing in the morning. So across the board, we have 43 line managers um, and every single them line managers were told to engage with their team on a daily basis to engage, see how things was going, um, were there any issues, just from a social um, point of view and mentoring your staff at this point in time and identifying whether, whether there was something wrong and um, dealing with it at that, at that stage. So um, that's kind of where we're at at the minute. Maybe we want Noel to move over to questions. Yeah, can I, can I just take you um, back a little bit to you said in 2010, um, the weather forced a shutdown and out of that you started doing these virtual days. Um, how do you feel that set you up for the current crisis? Did, did that provide any benefit that your staff had been used to doing these things over the last number of years? Or did it open a different set of uh, new issues uh, around effectiveness? No, I would say that's why we were very comfortable. The staff, I mean, my challenge, what, what probably everybody's facing now, I faced 10 years ago in terms of, of staff, um, staff skills and staff um, awareness and being comfortable and confident uh, about delivering in this way. So COVID-19 uh, and shutting down for this period of time has presented um, a different set of challenges, um, not in terms of the teaching and learning, um, but more so in terms of the support and um, the wraparound services that we give to our, our students. And again, the assessment, if that answers the question. I'm not sure if it yeah. does. Have, have you sought any feedback from, from students in, in terms of how they feel? Do, do they feel that they're learning effectively using this, this current um, way of doing it? I mean, I know, and, and people on, on the call might necessarily appreciate Northern Ireland, um, I think it was about six, seven years ago, started in introducing different funding models for blended learning. Um, yeah. So maybe if you could kind of talk about that in terms of how Northern Ireland funding changed a number of years ago to allow for, for more blended learning. I suppose I challenged the department in terms of the funding model a number of years ago, um, our DFA, our funders, and said to them, you know, um, this is a legitimate form of delivery. And, you know, whether we're online teaching um, on a daily basis or whether we're in the classroom, we're still teaching. So therefore, we still should be funded in the same way. Um, in terms of the normal um, delivery, they didn't have a problem with that there. The area, I suppose, that um, we're still, and probably this will support it now, this, this last seven weeks, was around the whole area of work-based learning and apprenticeships. Um, and how that they said that we had to have the students in the class, in the physical building, for at least, uh, I think, 15 hours per week. Which I suppose I challenged in terms of, we have a lot of students that travel, travel to mainland UK um, for work, uh, our apprentices, and that it's not always reasonable to expect them to be uh, flying back and forward. So um, in, t in terms of the funders, we've been having these um, discussions, and not say arguments. Um, and I think now this, this COVID-19 experience um, will support the work that we've been trying to, um, and the funding and the alliance of our flexible delivery models, it will support that now moving forward because we have demonstrated to the funders as a sector that all our apprentices are still learning online and can learn online. So um, that has supported that and hopefully moving forward in terms of funding that will be now brought in as a, as a delivery model. Um, again, our funding model has changed now whereby we are block funded. Um, so regardless of how we choose to deliver our, our curriculum or in our courses, we, we get the same amount of funding. So it's entirely up to the colleges um, how they deliver. And I think that's the way it should be because good pedagogy doesn't matter whether it's in the classroom or it's online, it's good pedagogy. Um, so, you know, in terms of that, it's, it's all about the learning experience um, for the student. And if they feel they're getting as adequate learning experience, um, or better online, then, then that's good. Um, the feedback from the students quite significantly has been that 
um, because they're being taught live um, and live, uh, live classrooms, that their learning experience is, is equal. The, the biggest feedback is they miss the social side of it. Um, and I think, you know, in terms of moving forward, we can't ever take that away, that that social side is one of the reasons why our students come to the college. Um, and we do provide a, a safe environment for a lot of our students as well in terms of um, coming from their home environments into the college. Um, it's a safe haven, so it is. So there's, that's why we've had to ramp up our support services in terms of supporting the students that are now learning from home um, around, you know, safeguarding them. And I broke quite a bit of um, guides around safeguarding online um, and support for both the staff and the students and how we can do that and do it well. So do you think, um, do you think the, the, the student engagement with the um, classes, the live classes um, has been high because of the lockdown? And if you were to try these things uh, and more of these things once the new normal happens, is it that same level of engagement going to be there? Or do you think there has been high engagement because of Sorry, have you a question, Kenji? Sorry, just about in. There's quite a few questions in the chat. All right, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I was seeing that, but I, 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 I thought no, I was reading them off. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I was waiting, Kenji, to come in with those questions. I have a question as well. <laughs> oh, hello. 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 Can you hear me? Can I yeah, ask you a question? Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, first of all, uh, th um, I just want to uh, thank you so much for sharing this experience. It's actually very inspiring. The, uh, it seems like you've done a lot of work and it must be very challenging for you. Um, I've got a couple of questions. Uh, first, uh, how did you encourage your staff to go through the training? I, um, I assume it probably was a lot of resistance from uh, from uh, members of staff, you said you created about 400 sessions, training sessions over the week. This is um, this is great, um, and then um, also wanted to ask, um, um, how did you approach practical um, stuff like um, teaching, for example, cooking, teaching practical skills like for engineering students? If you do that, like welding, for example, and how do you? Um, do the closed book assessments. Sorry, it's like lots of questions. <laughs> lots of questions there. I'll probably not remember them all. I suppose around the practical activities, um, the staff did come to me and actually at the start and said, you know, we in terms of say just take catering, um, you know, we, we can't um, assess these skills unless we actually are in the classroom with them. And that's right. That is the way it is. So we, we had to uh, work with our awarding bodies in terms of that assessment and had they had they done enough assessment to this point um, which would allow them to get their qualification. Now we did use, we do use video technology quite a lot in terms of demonstration purposes. So um, we were able to suppose from the from the practical classes like welding, um, catering, hairdressing, um, where they couldn't assess the student actually doing the activity, they maybe got them to do it at home video themselves, explain the process. So, you know, fundamentally, we're never going to be able to replace that type of assessment um, online. Uh, and I, I don't know how we, we would ever do that. Um, but in terms of just the technique, maybe, of how you did um, something like um, bacon scones, for example, the students were videoing that there and posting it and talking over um, the, the process in which they, how they would have done it. So that's, I suppose, how we were sort of supporting the staff from the practical skill areas um, and continuing to, de to deliver. Um, in terms of resistance from staff, the biggest resistor for, for me came 10 years ago. Um, mm -hmm. And it's kind of just been, um, you know, I had resistance from every area of the college at that stage. But through a process over the years, I suppose anybody coming to work in the college knows that this is just what they have to do. This is part of our delivery. It's asked, it's asked at recruitment. Um, we do have a lot of support. Well, I do have a lot of support from um, management and, and the chief executive who's very um, forward thinking in terms of technology um, mm -hmm. and also our governing body. So I've a lot, I, had, I do have a lot of support from the top and I think that's important. Um, it's just, it's part of our DNA in Southwest College to use technology. Mm -hmm. um, and I suppose that's just the culture that, that we have created 
um, and that's just part of what we do. That's amazing. Thank you very much. I'd like to keep in touch and ask uh, you uh, about your experience, maybe for the future references. No, no problem. My, my details will be up there. That's not a problem. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks for your question. Kenji, I believe you have a, a number of questions. I'm just going to go down the list. Oh, uh, so, sorry. Um, Connor, Connor Bradley probably had the first question. Um, Did he? Uh, I, I think my question was covered earlier. He, he asked, right, okay. have you had to do a lot of work to tie up your data between student MIS, online systems, dashboards and registers? Yes, Connor, I had, um, I'm supposed to come from a technical background that helped me as well. So I now not only have the teaching background, but also the technical background, um, which I do think in my role as, as their, their key skills. Um, so yes, initially I did have a lot of problems with disparate systems. Thankfully, at this point in time, I can say we have all, all, it's one single login to all our systems. So when students log on, they, they access everything. Um, and that is where we're at this, at this point in time. So, um, you know, one log on, students log into everything and, and that's it across the board, same as staff. Um, so we have something like 48 systems that are available remotely at the minute. Every single system within the college is available remotely. So from timetabling, Agresso, our finance system, our HR system, um, all our teaching and learning systems, all our assessment systems, every single thing in the college that we do is, is available remotely. So no, no members of staff can claim that they cannot do their work on a daily basis. <laughs> that's that's. I shouldn't say that out loud, but that's, that's the way it is. <laughs> okay, um, I think we'll move on to Walter Patterson's question. Um, in the live class, who has control over the student mics? So, the, so again, that was about a work we did for the staff um, in the three days before we flipped the college. We set up live links um, in the, on every single um, session of a course. Uh, that was a considerable amount of work for my staff to do, but we thought it was more beneficial so that um, whenever the students come in live on the Monday morning, they just hit the live, live classroom link and they were straight into the classroom. So the teacher is the moderator in the classroom and they control the mics. But again, I, I did say at the start, um, because we're rural and our broadband um, maybe isn't sufficient, um, in a lot of cases, students are using phones. A lot of our students are having to use mobile phones to access their live classroom. Um, and that's fine, they can use whatever they want. Uh, a lot of our data providers have lifted the bar uh, across, across, the, across um, Northern Ireland, I'm not too sure about the UK. Um, so that all, like, students all have unlimited data so they can use their phones. Um, and I think that is the case across the UK, um, but I'm not sure. But anyway, in terms of that there, they come into the live classroom, they are all, it's all set up in Canvas. Every single timetable session has a live classroom set up against it. They hit the button as a student and they're in. Um, and they're, they're being taught like this now, me and you together. Um, and that's, the, there's a whiteboard, there's an attendance list. Um, they have all their materials up on Canvas in terms of access and all the resources. So that's all available to them. Um, and We've only had two instances. We've had something like this last five teaching weeks. I counted there the last count 51,000 student engagements on um, live classrooms. So you can see it it's significantly enhances the, the delivery, um, online delivery model for the student if, if they're in a live classroom environment. Um, Kenji, I think I answered your question directly below that as well. So if we move on to Walter, Walter, are you on the call? Do you want to ask the question yourself? Yeah, push back. And one of the questions could be related to the way in which the teaching unions might respond to this, what might be seen as additional demand on staff. You know, this is not what was in the, the original contract, as it were, to be to be teaching live online. So it was just a general question, yep. Cara. Um, uh, we have worked significantly with our unions over the years. And initially, I have to say 10 years ago, we did uh, come up against a bit of resistance in terms of the unions. But the way um, it's sold to the, the staff and I suppose the unions is that this is uh, part of what we do in terms of our delivery model of teaching. 
And to think that, that we, are, we are going to always be in front of the students in a physical classroom um, is not the way forward and hasn't been for a period of time. Um, so it's, it's an alternative way of teaching. It's different from being face-to-face, -face, but we've also implemented a lot of project-based learning strategies for teaching, um, using, flex, using technology for teaching. So it's, it's another teaching strategy. Um, so, you know, we've, we've worked with the unions, everything we do, we, we run it past the unions um, to in order th to bring them on board. We had a bit of kickback from the unions in terms of the digital skills qualification that I rolled out in terms of staff getting additional time um, to do the qualification because we didn't give them additional time. We, we said it was a, an upskilling of staff and, and they had to, you know, participate in it themselves, but we would pay them and we would, we would facilitate the training. So that's kind of the only area that we had a wee bit of um, kickback from the unions, but it was around time for to do their digital skills up training. Do you, do you want to mention what you're talking about that qualification care? You mentioned to me yesterday, I think it was, that you're now in a position to open that up, that qualification up to other institutions and if anybody's in the calls interested to discuss. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yes. I'm, I'm not doing a sales pitch or anything, but uh, you, you did mention it. Yeah, it was just that we, we, we wrote the qualification. It is in line, as I say, with the JISC framework. Um, it is specifically designed around educators um, and it is one module specifically on online pedagogy. Um, and if anybody um, is interested in it, uh, we're going to be starting to roll this course out now online um, for anybody that, you know, across the UK that wants to um, come on board and engage in it. So if anybody wants any more information about the qualification, um, you can um, let me know at the end, email me. My email address is kira.duffy at swc.ac.uk. So um, maybe just stick it under the chat there, Noel. My yeah, email and, and we're, we're talking with Kira of maybe getting that up onto the Just Framework for easy procurement of it. Um, Abigail, um, do you want to open your mic up and, and ask your question? Because I think that's quite interesting. Yeah, um, then the safeguarding policies and procedures and how they rolled out and how they were received by the, um, the young people and parents, Kira. Yeah. Yeah. Has that been a consideration, Kira? This... Yeah. Yes, I, I spent three weeks there actually on safeguarding. We had, we had some, uh, we have a safeguarding policy as everybody has um, and we had uh, in the past a bit on, in terms of online um, safe, you know, safeguarding online, but it wasn't at the level that I felt it needed to be at when the whole college um, moved to complete online delivery. So I worked with the safeguarding team, uh, our head of HR, and actually I engaged with the unions over this one. Um, they were quite interested in it. So, you know, after a few drafts, the union said it was a very good um, document in terms of supporting the staff and students. And I suppose I'm very conscious that um, there can be so many problems with students and staff being online. Um, therefore, we were quite, I came out quite strong in terms of the platforms that we would endorse as a college staff using. For example, we didn't endorse WhatsApp as a communication tool because we had no control over it. Um, we didn't endorse um, Zoom um, as a communication tool um, because again, we had no control over it in terms of um, tracking and reporting and safeguarding. Um, so the, our systems, our chosen systems, our endorsed systems, our Teams, um, Canvas, Blackboard Collaborate for a live classroom, um, and obviously our Microsoft 365. So um, if a member of staff or a student steps outside using the college's endorsed systems, um, they, are they are in breach um, and they're on their own basically. Um, we can't support them. So I had one instance of a safeguarding issue last week and it did actually happen on WhatsApp. Um, and the students created the WhatsApp group themselves and there was um, some bullying going on on it. Um, but again, you know, the people, the head of faculty came to me and said, you know, what, what's our line on this? But because I had the safeguarding document in place, um, it was sent out to all staff and students and they were um, advised and, and told to um, read it. And we also um, have a corporate module on safeguarding um, available to staff and students, and that is rolled out at induction. So it's a bit of education process as well, but for, for me, um, being responsible for the systems, um, I have to ensure that um, safeguarding is at the very top um, of what we do, um, and we have a, a duty of care to our staff and our students. We are going to answer all these questions, but 
Um, I think we're going to pause there slightly so that we can cut the video at the 30 minute point. So thanks very much for joining us.